Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and thank you for joining me today. I've got an exciting uh, training for you where I'm going to show you how to do five different types of one-click increments, both on time, on amounts, numbers, days, and dates. All right, thank you. I hope you join me for this training. Alrighty, thank you for joining me. I'm super excited to be showing you this. Uh, and let's go over why. Why would you want to set up uh, one-click increments? Well, there could be a, good, uh, a lot of reasons. One is speed. Um, sometimes entering dates takes a little bit of time or changing dates, changing options, changing numbers. Uh, another thing is accuracy. Like if you're entering times and you want to be exactly accurate, you don't want to enter an incorrect value or an incorrect time or incorrect number, using these increments point and click uh, is a nice way to do it. Speed and accuracy. And um, also, you can we can set the increments. I'd like to maybe say uh, I only want to enter times on a per hour basis. I only want to enter, let's say, 9 p.m. or I only want to enter one hour, 30 minute increments. Or when I enter a number, I only want to enter five. So I want to be able to set the increment level, whether it's numbers, whether it's amounts, whether it's dates, okay? So this allows us to do that. And so I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in today's training. Let's get started with that. All right, first of all, I've set up some formatting here so that we can quickly uh, work on those increments. And uh, I've set up about uh, five different types of increments. Uh, first, we have a date increment. And the idea of this is I want uh, the those angles to show up only on date formats, right? If it's if it's if it's a cell is dated uh, formatted with a date, I want it to show up. Uh, I also want it to show up on time formats. Okay, I want to use this increment for, for cells that show time, as well as cells that show numbers, right? Any, any cell with a number format, I, wanna, I want to set that as well. Same with amounts. And I also want to be able to switch days. If there's a, if there's a cell that's displaying a weekday, I want to be able to control the, to change that weekday uh, using these one-click increments. All right, well, let's get started. So I've set these up here, and I have the days of the week, and let's go ahead and name our ranges first, okay? That's always a good, helpful, helpful way to do it. So let's go ahead, and what we'll do is we'll set this range as to weekdays, and we can highlight it. Go up in the upper left hand corner here weekdays okay we've set that range and now time increments okay i want to set i want to set these as well so we can do this and we'll call this um uh, let's just say increment type okay range okay and then but i also want the increments we're going to use index uh, match uh, formula so not only do I want uh, to index these right but I want to know the value of each of those so that we can when we increment it we know what the value is okay so let's get that okay in Excel a day is um, worth one whole number for example um, if you enter today's date uh, which is 1120 okay uh, 1120 and you add one it's going to be 21 equals this plus one okay you're going to get to 1121 okay so that means if we add one we're going to increase a day but what if we want to add one hour well if we only want if we want to know what an hour is so since there's 24 hours in a day we know that one hour is equal to equal to 1 divided by 24 okay and that is what an actual hourly is so if we're going to be adding hours right so if we have 8 49 p.m. here and we want to know what this is so we just do equals this plus this and then we put it in a time format and we get 949 you see so basically this value will add okay now I want to know I want to know what 30 minutes is. Well, obviously, it's uh, if one hour is divide, one divided by 24, then uh, 30 minutes would be 48. So we can do simply equals 
1 divided by 48, okay? And the same thing here within 15 minutes is, well, 96 equals 1 divided by 96, okay? Now we have that value that we could also do a minute. You know, now a minute, if there is if there is 60 minutes in one hour and 24 hours in one day, we know that equals 60 times 24, okay? So we know that there is 1440 in one, 1440 minutes in one day. So one minute is equal to one divided by 1440. Okay, now we can check that, okay? Equals one minute plus 949, we should get 950. So we know that that's accurate, okay? So five minutes, right, is simply, I mean, there's many ways to calculate it. This, this times five, 10 minutes is equal to one minute times 10, okay? So basically, we, had, we now have our values for our increments from one minute to one hour, okay? So now I want to I want to define this entire table. So we're going to set, we're going to highlight the entire table and we're going to just call it increment range. Okay. So we have two. Okay. We have increment type range, right? Which is just the names. And then we have the entire range, increment range, and we have weekdays. Okay. So we've set three week, weekdays and those are going to help us moving forward with some formulas. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to allow you, uh, the user, or me, to set those increments. So when we increase the time, do we want to increase it by one hour? Do we want to increase it by one minute? Or, you know, what is those increases or decreases when we change this time? Well, we can do that simply with a data validation. So let's go ahead and I want this to be a drop down list of all of these. All right, let's go ahead and do that with a data validation. Uh, we can do that with data, all right, data validation, okay, and uh, let's go back just so you know, we're going to basically going to input type range, so you can just copy this, okay, that's the quickest way, into data, select your cell, data, data validation, okay, go to list equals this, copy and paste, income type range, okay, so, now we've created a data validation, okay? But what I want is when this is one minute or 10 minutes, I want the number, the increment number, whatever it's tied to here, to show up, right? So if it's 10 minute, I want 0 0.0069444, right? If it's one minute, I want, you know, 6944. So we can do that with a simple index match formula. Let's go ahead and do that, equals index Okay, and what are we indexing? We're gonna index the entire array, which is this whole table here. And remember, we've set that to increment range, okay? So that's the whole range, okay? And now we need to find the row number. To find the row number, we can use match. So match, what are we, what are we looking up? We're gonna look up 10 minutes, okay? And what is the range that we're looking at? What is the range or array in which we're looking at? Well, we're looking at in, income type range okay remember we set that range that's just the list of names okay and then zero is going to be an exact match we want an exact match and then the next value or the last value that we need to enter is the row number okay excuse me the column number well in this range in income range we have two columns the first column is the type right and the second column is the amount since we want the amount of time since we want that decimal number we're looking for column number two column number two okay so that's it. Index match is super simple and it is my favorite. So now when we change this, right, we get the we get the value associated with that. So that's great. OK, I want to um, set that so that we can set the increment levels. We'll keep it at five minutes now and date increment. We'll set this to one one date and the number increment. We'll set this to one amount five. We can change these. And when you and uh, so that's good. We're, we're set there for the formula. So now we have all of our increments. Let's go ahead and create our shapes now. Okay, insert shape, and we're going to go with the triangle. Okay, and let's set it. We want to set it about the same height and width 
as the cells. Let's go ahead and take a look at that, 0.819. Let's set the width a little bit higher, 0.21, and we'll go with 0.19, make it about as big as we can and let it still fit within the cells. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, change the look of that with the theme of our workbook. We'll keep it a blue like that move it up a little bit and we're good and now let's copy that copy and paste control C or control V or duplicate it with control D so we'll use control D and now what we want to do is we want to just reverse that I want to uh, go ahead and rotate that vertically flip vertically alright so now we're good so now we've got our two shapes we don't need to worry about the placement we're gonna take care of the placement through VBA code so let's place it here and here okay because our VBA code is going to take care of the placing it for us automatically in the right spot. And the idea is, the idea is I want to place the one that goes up just to the left, right? And I want to place the, um, the one going down right on the inside, right? And I want it, and I want it to, to be set there regardless of how big or small I make it, I want it to set. Okay, and one more important thing, let's go ahead and set the properties on these two, holding the control button down, clicking the other one, right click, size and properties, okay, and what I want to do is I don't want to change the size of these. The movement is fine, but I don't want to change the size, so I'm going to select this, move but don't size. That's very important, otherwise they get stretched out at times, so and we don't want that. So now that we've set that, we'll keep these we'll keep these up here, but we know that our VBA code is going to place those in the right spot for us. All right, so let's go ahead and go into the VBA code and take a look at that. And uh, we can do that right now. And to get into the VBA mode, uh, the developers tab here, and then Visual Basic, you can also use Alt F11, Alt F11 to get in there. If you do not have the developers tab visible, you can get to it uh, simply by going into the file menu here under uh, options and then selecting the customize ribbon where you will see the developers option so you'll want to make sure to check this alright here we go into the developers we go and we're going to see that we have our uh, visual basic customer sheet here so we'll want to select that our first bit of code we're going to be writing directly on the sheet Okay, and what, when we want things to happen, when we want these triangles to appear, we want them to appear when we select a specific field. Okay, not when we make a change, but simply when we select, we want them to appear. And that is the selection change. So we'll find that over in the worksheets here. And then we're going to search for selection change. It's already been selected, but it's here, selection change. So our code is going to go right between here. Okay, and uh, in this particular case, uh, we're not going to uh, use any specific cell. In other words, often we, when we want to select a specific cell, we'll write something like if not intersect uh, E3. Uh, but in this case, we, we pretty much want to do it on almost uh, any specific cell within the sheet. Uh, we're going to have other. Uh, options available but for right now we're just going to leave this open so that means we're going to do this for the entire sheet okay and in order however with that said we don't want it to we don't want these to appear on just every cell we want to them to appear on cells that pass uh, certain uh, constraints okay we want it uh, for one if it's a date field we want to we want to pass it if it's a, a time field then we want it to appear if it's a number field okay so now how do we validate those okay so what we need to do is we need to validate those fields and fit out if this is a date field then it appear because I want it to appear in here and I want it to appear here right so what what is unique about this field that is not unique with any other field well one of the unique features is its format okay and we'll go ahead and drop this down and pin it uh, is the format this is an appointment date format right a date format so we can use that as a unique validator you see how it's got a format of date okay we also want to make sure that they all have the same date so let's go ahead and uh, highlight these and also make sure they are all also on the date by hitting enter now all the date fields have the unique format and we're gonna use this as a validator okay so what is the date format let's go ahead and take a look at that and in this particular case uh, the date format we're using is this 
and we can go into custom here and we can highlight that that is the date format we don't need to make any changes if we want a custom date format we can make any type of a uh, change here and then we want to copy that we want to make sure to copy the format okay just like we've done here control C go ahead and copy that now back into the VBA what we want to do is basically I want to know what type of format the selected cell has okay if the cell format is a date then I want our triangles our up or down increment uh, buttons to appear okay so first we need to dimension out uh, our let's just say our increment type as a string so we'll go ahead and dim ink type uh, as string okay so we'll go ahead and start with that and uh, in fact uh, let's go ahead and then define it okay our cell okay and the cell format and also the cell format uh, we'll do that too because once we uh, we want to know both cell format and the string now the income type is the type that we're going to be selected here we're going to put that there once we know the type so I'll explain that to you so the cell format okay is equal to the active cell dot number format okay and let's go ahead just so you know what that is let's go ahead and uh, put that out as a message box okay let's uh, I'm just going to comment that out and then I'm gonna write a new line just for temporary message box okay active and then we'll go ahead and copy this copy this so basically that's going to tell us what it's a great way to know what the active form because you want to match it right so let's go ahead and uh, and saying it okay this is general okay because we selected it what's this this is mm so that's the format and this is a great way to show you okay this is what VBA sees this is what Excel sees okay this is the format so we're gonna to need to match that okay right so you see it's telling us what the format is because we've created a message box just temporarily so we know okay now we know we need to match that all right so let's go back into the VBA we'll remove this line we don't need the message box so the cell format in in when we hit a date is going to be that format okay but now we need to know what the cell type is if the format is this then then the cell type let's say is date right and here's a perfect example of how we can use case case is a great feature basically it's like multiple if then statements if this then this if this then this if this so we need to know amount we need to know number we need to know date we need to know time and we need to know if it's a weekday so it's like five different cases or in our case four different cases plus one addition okay so we're gonna use case and I'll show you how to use it it's a great little feature we're gonna say select case and then cell all right, let's go ahead and enter that that's an automatic type I have cell format okay so it's basically saying if the case if the cell format is this then this it's kind of like a, a condensed if then statement case okay and then um, let's go ahead and put in um, our one for date okay and if you remember that was this all right M M D D Y Y so that's the case so if the case then what then right income type equals amount so if you think of it like an, an if then statement but condensed it's, it's helpful excuse me date okay date if the if the format cell format is M slash D slash Y Y Y then the income type is date okay so that's one choice what else do we have well we have a few others okay if the case is remember we saw zero right we're going to use that as our number format then income type equals number okay let's let's these are text right so we want to make sure we put them within quotes if the case equals if the case is uh we had uh, amount so let's go ahead and copy that amount okay we'll probably get an error on this one because we're not finished with it so let's comment that out so we don't get any errors uh so we had amount right and uh, this one's an amount field let's go ahead and uh, copy that okay more number formats custom copy okay okay so if that's the case then we're going to use amount so case let's take the comment out of that case and then in this case and then income type equals amount okay 
is we need to know what these are because we have to set the increment level. It's different. Dates can have a different increment level. Numbers, they're not going to all go up by one, right? So we need to separate them because we're going to set dates maybe to one, maybe to a week, maybe to seven. Maybe we're going to set five minutes. They're all going to be different, so we need to separate those. Okay. And the last one is uh, time, I believe. So case, and let's go ahead and... Uh, erase that I want to I want to copy and paste the time right so we have the time here that's a custom format more number formats custom and then we're just going to copy and paste that okay back into the VBA code we go and uh, we'll go ahead and set that up as uh, time okay income type equals time all right Let's go ahead and check our code. Make sure we've got all of the uh, beginning and end quotes there. That looks good. That looks good. Good, good. Okay, good. Save. Always save. Remember, when you write code, you want to save before running anything because we do mess up. I mess up quite often, so it's always good to save. And uh, okay, so we have everything but the day. And the reason is we don't have the day is because that's a – here's the reason. Now, the, the day, right? This is the, just a general field, right? So there's nothing really specific about the format, right, of this. I don't want these triangles to appear every time I hit a general format, right? This format is no different. So we need another validator, right? We need another validator. We need something other than the cell format. Well, what can we use? Well, generally, if there's a day in here, okay, um, we know that whatever is in here is going to be within this list, right? We know that that if it's Monday, you know, it's going to be within this list. So we can use that as a validator. We can basically, within VBA, saying if the day, if whatever text is in here, right, is within this list, then let's consider that a weekday field. Okay, so we can use that as a validator, and we can write that code in um, in VBA. But we're going to use the match feature. We're going to use the match. Basically, it's going to say, you know, in equals match. Okay. We're looking up Monday, we're going to look up weekday, okay, zero, comma, zero, okay, and that's it, right? Uh, weekday, no, that's the different weekday, we used a different one, weekdays, we use weekdays, there we go, okay. So once we set that to weekdays, let's go ahead and get that right, weekday, select that. Okay, double click on that. Now, once we select that weekdays, it's right, right? If it's not right, it's going to be NA, okay? So we know that, that if we use the match feature in VBA, well, we're going to get uh, the result that we want. We can use that as a validator. So let's go ahead and do that within VBA now, okay? Now, we can just use that with a simple in statement, okay? And we'll do that here. Um, so we can use the match. The match tends to work great in formulas, but I wanted to let's do another one. Let's use um, let's use find. Okay, find when we use match. If it's not found in Excel, it's going to return an error in Excel, and sometimes it's hard to work around match. We can do this, right? APW. Let's see application work match, and so we can enter the the uh, something like uh, active cell value and then range weekdays weekdays right and then zero so we can use that right but this particular one if it's not found it'll return an error pretty easily right so I tend to stay away from match uh, unless we can use error a, a better one is we'll use the find we can use find it works pretty well too so let's go ahead and write something for the find if not sheet one dot range and I'll explain this to you weekdays weekdays okay remember weekdays remember weekdays is the range we're referring to this range Monday through Sunday 810 through a 16 okay so we're referring to that specific dot find so basically we're saying if if within this range find something find what active cell dot value okay that means whatever the value is of the cell that you've selected uh, and then after well there's no after so we'll just leave that blank look in well we want to look in the cell values x l values values okay 
And what do you want to look at? You want to look at the whole, XL whole, okay? That's all we really need. There's lots of other variations for find, which you may need, you know, for specific, but for our purposes, we don't need search order, search direction. We don't need that right now. So in other words, that's sufficient. That's sufficient because uh, we're really just looking at the active cell. And then what we want to say is, is nothing. It's one of those double negatives, is nothing, okay? If not and nothing. Those cancel each other out. So basically you're, we're saying if it's something, if it's something, right, it's not nothing. If it's something, then, right, then, okay, and then what? Okay, then income type equals days. Let's say, let's say then income type equals days. Okay, we'll set that to days. Okay, so basically we said, okay, if it's not nothing, if we find a match, that means it's one of those days. Okay. So that, that's going to work as a great validator for days. Okay. So now let's go ahead and um, uh, we'll write that a little bit later. So now we can go ahead and set our shapes. Now if it's past all these, but what if it's not, right? What if, what if none of those cases? Let's write something if it's not any of those. Let's say uh, income type is still blank it's because we've selected on something. So let's set that. If income type equals blank basically double quotes then what should we do right well then I want to um, clear the contents of B7 what I want to do is I want to store that type right here I want to store the type right here if if it's not I want to clear it okay so we'll store it right after this in VBA so I want to store that type right there then so in this case range B7 right if B7 dot clear contents. I want to clear that. Okay, clear contents. Clear type. <laughs> nice, huh? Okay, clear the contents. So basically I'll put a little uh, statement there. Clear previous increment increment type. Okay. So that's what that's doing there. And then we want to exit. We don't want we don't want to continue with any code because it's not exit sub. There is actually one additional row and all, there's one additional code that we're going to add here but not yet and then I'll show you why okay and so we will add something here uh, but not at the moment okay so next next let's let's show our shapes okay now we've created the shapes but we haven't named them yet we always like to name our shapes so in this case let's go ahead and call this income up uh, increment up increment up inc up okay and because and then we'll name this one increment down increment down shorter for inc down okay inc down now when we refer to them within the code we always know what is what okay so that's very helpful back into the code we go and let's go ahead and write some code with shapes with shapes okay and remember we don't need to put something like sheet one here because we're on sheet one right we're on sheet one we don't need it however if we're in a module right if we're if we're in a module which we will be later we do need to define what sheet we're on okay but because we are this code is specifically on sheet one we don't need to add that in here so that's not necessary when we're coding on the sheet itself all right so with shapes and we're gonna start out with income up right we just define that Okay, what do we want to do? Okay, so that means the following code until end with, we're going to be talking about and working on code for that. Okay, dot means because we know we're working with that shape, dot what? First, we want to make it visible. Okay, and then what do we want to do? Well, then we want to position it in the right place, right? And the up, I want the up, I want this up, right? I want it to go right here. Okay, I'm going to place it outside now because I want the code to put it there. I want it right there. I want the left, whatever the active cell is, whatever the active cell. That's okay, we're not done with that yet. Uh, whatever the active cell is, I wanted to place it just on the left. So let's go ahead and do that right now, okay? First, let's make it visible equals MSO true, okay? Visible is true. And uh, dot left, okay? And equals active cell dot left, okay? And um, where do we want the top? Basically, the top is the same thing, top equals active cell dot top okay so that's it all we're going to do is placing it on the left it's pretty simple because it's going to go on the left side of that okay so that covers off with the up now how about the down okay we'll go ahead and copy that paste that back in and we're going to go ahead and change the shape name to income down dwn 
We also want that to be true. But on the left, in this case, we don't want it to appear obviously overlap. We do want it to top. So we do need to change this left because we want it to replace. So what I want is I want this cell to be placed on the right, right? But the problem is we don't I don't want it an equal distance. I want it automatically to be at the rightmost edge of whatever the however column. So if this column's wide, I want it all the way on the left. It's, if it's very narrow, I still want it on on the left. So we need to make sure. So what we're going to do is I'm going to place it at the beginning of the column F, the beginning of the next column, and then we're going to increment, move it over a little bit. So basically in two steps, we're going to place it at the beginning. We're going to be placing it right at the beginning of here. And then we're going to, we're going to use something called increment left and we're going to move it over here just to the beginning. So we'll do that with code. Let's go ahead and do that. And we can do that with uh, active cell. Okay. And, but we're not going to do it on top. We're going to offset it. Okay. Offset, offset, uh, something active. So offset. Okay. Zero, zero for the row one dot left. Okay. And that's going to place it just on the left row. Okay. So that's basically, we're saying we don't want to offset any rows, no rows. We're going to offset it, but we're going to offset it one column to the right. Now, if we wanted it one column to the left, we'd go negative one. If we wanted it one row to the bottom, right below the active cell, we'd use one. Or we wanted it run row above, we'd use minus one. So that's how we do it. But we want to stay on the same row, so it's going to be the same row, and one column over. And the next line of code is we want to use increment. We want to move it. Okay, let's just show you what this would be before we add the increments. Okay, let's go ahead and reset that code. We had a break there earlier. Okay, let's go ahead and reset it. Now it's reset. And now we let's see active cell active spelled that wrong. I V E. Okay, active cell, and we need to make the change here too. Good spelling, Randy. Active. Okay. There we go. I think that should work. All right. Again, nice spelling. All right, now one good way, if I misspell it, look, active, I'm going to misspell it purposely on this one, okay? Look how they're all in lowercase. You know, when you see that, you know something's wrong, okay? But when you spell it right and, and they move to, you know, uppercase properly, then you know we've got it right, okay? So that's a good way of, of testing out. And so basically, okay, you see here, now they're both in the same place, both on top of each other. So in that case, we will move it over one cell to the right. So let's go ahead and do that. Top equals active cell left. We need this, this offset. Sorry, we're not offsetting the top. We're offsetting it right here. Top equals this top. Okay. Active cell offset left and left. Okay. Now we've got it. Now we're going to, now they're going to be placed over that. We're not changing the top. Top stays the same. Left goes over there. Okay. Good. So now it's not exactly one. We still have to add that increment, right? We want it here, right? We want it right here. So we have to add that additional increment line I was talking to you about. And we can do that with once in one dot increment, increment left. We want it to move over to left and left. And we wanted a minus because we wanted to move it more over to the left, not, not add to the left, but reduce from the left. And I think 16 should work just about perfectly because our icons are there. All right. That looks good. All right, nice. Now look, when I select something that's not going to meet the v validation, they don't, um, they don't, they don't go away. What we want to do is I want to say, hey, if we're not, if 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 the cell doesn't meet the validation, we need to have these removed, right? We don't want them. We don't want them there. So that's where that additional line of code comes in. Okay, that's where that additional line of codes. And basically, what I want to do is I want to say if the income type is nothing then I want to create a subroutine that basically hides those okay and we can do that uh, with just some very very simple code uh, we could just say with with two lines let's go ahead and uh, put it in right here uh, shapes okay income up okay dot visible equals MSO false. Okay. And the same thing for it down. Okay. 
So that so that means basically when when the criteria is not met, when we have selected a field that where we do not want the shapes to appear, then it's going to not be visible. Okay, I'm going to clear the field. Okay, good. So let's take a look at that. Nice, and select something outside that doesn't fall within that text text that does not meet false perfect so that should work really well and now when once we select a cell and then we do assign macros to these we have to know what variable what amount to increment up and what amount to go down right and what type of field it is so we want to make sure that we've set the selected type right here so that when we do run those macros we know what field what type of field that we're on so let's go ahead and make sure we enter the selected type through the VBA code and we can do that uh, right now with just one line of code uh, like this range b7 dot value equals income type okay and we've set it up and let's go ahead and check that uh, by selecting okay nothing good date that looks good days that doesn't we got one character on that so we'll have to fix that we don't need that uh, that's nothing amount is good number is correct time is correct okay so we're gonna fix that days let's get remove, remove that extra character right under let's take a look under days so let's go ahead and find that number amount time and right here one extra apostrophe we don't need okay we're good with that so now good it looks like everything is working properly we now have all of our different fields even within the table or within uh, on the upper fields and it's being cleared out notice it's being cleared out when we select something else which is what we want okay good now what we do is we're going to uh, write macros to assign to these shapes so that we can increase the appropriate uh, amounts so let's go ahead and do that now and now we're going to create a uh, subroutine a sub module so let's go ahead and insert a module and we'll go ahead and name that module as I also always like to do clicking in the properties window and in this case we'll just call this increment macros make sure you assign a name that you can easily recognize when you have 20 30 40 uh, modules you want to quickly and easily recognize that okay so we've uh, named our module now we'll go ahead and write sub subtune pretty much we only need to write uh, two subs on this one uh, for income up and one for increment down so let's go ahead and do that now sub okay uh, increment increment up okay and that's be good and then we want one for down okay simple enough easy enough okay and on this what we need to do is first we need to get the income type and uh, let's go ahead and dimension out our income type as a string and we, we can do this uh, above both macros because we're going to use the same so income type equals uh, dim income type as string okay Okay, we're doing it above, otherwise we don't have to do it for each one of them because it's done already above both. So it's that's a, a constant, which is good for this particular module. So for income up, income type equals uh, dot range B7. We need to maybe set the sheet in this case, dot value. So let's do that above, right? Because we can't use dot unless we use above. Spell value right first. Okay, with sheet one okay remember we need to define the sheet because we are now off the sheet so we need to say hey what sheet are we working in so all of our code is going to be in here if we want to work with sheet one and in this case we only have one sheet so all of our all of our in this case all of it's going to be working with that and so now that we've defined the income type we can use case again case is a really nice uh, a, a really great uh, feature so we're going to use that again and in this case we want to know what the increment number is right what is the increment number are we going to go up five are we going to go up 0.5 or whatever so we need to dimension that increment number so let's do that dim increment number as double we'll use double because it may be uh long is good for whole numbers double is good for uh those numbers with decimals okay that are not necessarily whole numbers so we can do that again okay and we'll in this case select 
case income type, okay? And I keep saying income increment type. I was just doing some accounting work, so I got income in my head. Uh, so increment type, okay? In this case, uh, case is date, case date, okay? That means if the type is date, then what? Then the increment number equals dot range B3. Remember, B3 dot value, okay? Date, okay? Date increment, B3, right? We've set that date increment there, okay? You can set, you can, if you want to go by weeks, you can change this to seven or months or, or whatever. So the date increment will increase or decrease the days based on this value. It's B3, okay? Uh, what if the case is uh, a time, okay? Case time. Okay, time is a good one. And in that case, increment number is going to be B4. Let's go ahead and just copy and paste this for quicker so you don't have to hear me type loudly. And B4, okay. And in the next case, we have, we've done date, we've done time, so let's do number, case number, okay. Increment, in this case, uh, it will be five, B five. All right, and the last one is the amount. So case amount, and that's B six. Okay, we have one more to write, and that's the weekdays. That's the one that's a little bit different. That's the strange stepchild of our of our workbook here. So we always want to be a little bit different. So that that is excellent. Okay, so we've got the four main ones where we defined it. We've got all the four main ones, which we've got uh, date, minutes, number, and amount. Now let's do days. Okay, days are a little more trickly, be tricky, so let's go ahead and add that in now. Under, um, all we need to do is with, a, with an if statement there, and then if income type uh, equals days, then, okay, then what? Okay, then we need to write some code, okay? Okay, if, uh, if, um, what if the active sells Monday, okay? So basically, this is, we're going up, okay? In this case, we're going up, right? So if it's Monday, right, we want it to go to Sunday, right? Because we're going, we're moving up, we're moving up. So if it's Monday, right, we want it to go to Sunday. If it's Saturday, we want it to go to Friday. Okay, so but if it's but if it's Monday, we don't want it to go up to just this one. We want it to actually switch to Sunday. So let's specifically tell it to do just that. Okay, if active cell dot value equals Monday, Monday, then okay, active cell value equals Sunday. Okay, because we're moving up. Okay. Then active cell equals Sunday. Okay. Let's get the parentheses in there. And then what if it's not else? If it's not, then basically what I want to do, okay, in this case, if it's Monday, I want it to be, I, excuse me, if it's Wednesday, I want it to go to Tuesday, right? Because we're moving up. If it's Tuesday, I want it to move to Monday. Okay, so let's say it's Tuesday, right? If the taste and I want to switch it to Monday, that means I want the value to be a. If it's Tuesday, if the current value is Tuesday, I want the, the next value to be a ten, right? A ten, and we can do that. And here we can use the uh, match combination as well because match is going to give us a row number. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that too. We can do that with this active cell dot value equals dot range. A, right, because it's going to be in that A column, right, for sure we're going to be in the A column. It's going to be one of those values in the A column. We know that. We just need to get the row now. What is the row? We can use the match combination. We can use the match, right? So if we know, if we know this is two, right, this value is two, right, this is one. If we match, if we match, let's say this is Tuesday, okay, and we run a match just with a simple formula equals match, okay, matching Tuesday under week days okay probably should use a different name it's too close that's going to return a value of two right okay so if this is two right 
if the value is 2, we need to get to 10, right? If the value of this, how are we going to get to 10? Well, all we have to do is add 8, right? If the value is 3, right, and we need to get to 11, we're also going to add 8. So all we need to do is match it and then add 8. And that'll give us the exact cell that we want. So we can do that through VBA. Through We can use match right in the VBA. Application match, okay, I've used a shortcut here. That helps me type faster because I'm so match. Okay, what are we matching? We're going to match the active active spell. Let's see if I can spell it. Active cell dot value. Okay, and what what is the range that we're matching it to? It's sheet one range weekdays. Okay, weekdays. Remember, and then zero. Okay, that's going to get us. That's going to get us our our match. Or that's going to get us our number. Okay, and then what do we want to match it with? Well, we want to add eight first. Remember, plus eight dot value. Okay, and that is going to give us in this case exactly a ten. Right, a right plus. Let's move this in. A plus. This is going to give us. 8, this is going to give us 2, right? This is going to give us 2. A, 2, plus 8 is 10, right? A, 2, plus 8 means A, 10. So A, 10, what is the value of A, 10? You see how that works? It just gives us the value of A, 10. So that's going to give us Monday, okay? And we need the and sign here. Okay. All right, A and application. All right, so that's good. All right, now we've counted accounted for days, so let's go ahead and uh, set that, uh, minimize that, and now we've got we can cover for the other types. We can add up here um, if income type does not equal days. Okay, so basically this is going to be every other situation, whether it's uh, number, time, date, or amount. Then it's very simple. Then active cell dot value equals okay active cell active cell let's try to get that right dot value e plus the increment the increment number right we've defined the increment number here right we know that it's either going to be b3 b4 b5 or b6 so all we're going to do is add the current value to whatever the increment number set is and so that we've covered for both. So this will cover for the four situations above. And then the days will cover for the situation uh, if it's a day. And that is going to cover it. All right. Let's go ahead and test that out. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll save our application. And uh, I'll just go over active cell value because active cell plus. Okay. It looks good. We'll go ahead back into the worksheet. And I think we've got the date increment set as one. And now all we have to do is assign the macro to this. So let's go ahead and right click and assign macro. And we'll, uh, that is the increment up macro. Okay, so select that and then click. All right, and it works. And let's go ahead and change that. Let's say we wanted to go every week. So we're going to change the date increment to seven. Select it again, go up a week okay great now we just have to do the down we can assign this macro even though we haven't written the macro yet we uh, do have an empty macro so we can assign it now and then write the macro okay increment down we'll go ahead and assign that although there's nothing there's nothing on it yet well, let's go ahead and write that it's going to be quite simple because it's almost going to be a duplicate of the increment up back into the VBA module we go and uh, why don't we go ahead and just copy copy this entire up and then we'll make the changes uh, necessary okay so highlight it all holding down the shift and click control C back down and control V okay now we've pasted it now let's go ahead and make our uh, differentiations for the down okay for the most part we are still going to have to keep the uh, increment type and the case is all going to be the same except we're going to move in the opposite direction. When it comes to days, we're also going to move into the operation uh, into the differentiation going uh, down, okay? And so it for the if it's not days, it's going to be very simple. We're just going to take changes to a minus. 
minus the increment number. So we've covered that, and now we've just got to go through days. Okay. So here, basically, what we want to do is, is if we're going down, right, and if we get down to the bottom and it's Sunday, we want the next value to be Monday. Okay. But if it's Tuesday, we want it to be Wednesday. So we want it to move down. And we can do that with just a few updates. So, and we can just switch this. It's quite easy. If it's Sunday. If it's Sunday, we just change it over to Monday. Okay, so we've covered the Sunday, but what about for the rest of the days? Okay, and that's pretty easy. We can also use the same type of match formula, except this time we're not going to be adding eight. Okay, we're going to be adding um, actually ten, and I'll show you why. Okay, let's go ahead and change this to ten. Okay, so the idea is right. If it's Monday and we're going down, if it's if if it's ten, right? This is if if Monday if our current value is Monday right let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> it works already okay if it's Monday right we know that that's one right that's the first value right so if Monday is one and we need to get to a eleven right we need to get to a eleven all we need to do is add one plus ten right so all we need to do is add ten which I just did <laughs> you can see in the macro I just changed this to ten right so all I did and that's it. That's all we have to do. So now when we're at Monday, we go down Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, up Saturday, Sunday, good, all right? And the same thing with this. Uh, I think we're still on seven days, so if we subtract seven days, we'll go to February 27th, February 20th, 13th. Okay, great, and uh, same with numbers. Increment number we have set uh, to 10, so it'll reduce by 10 here. And uh, let's go ahead and check the uh, time increment. We have it set at five minutes, so we'll go down. And so that's working really well too. And let's go ahead and check uh, within the table itself. All right, that looks good. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's how we do increments. Uh, it's a really, really handy tool. I don't think you're going to use all of these in a single worksheet, although you certainly could. But I wanted to give you five different samples of how you can use the increment of value. It's quick. It's fast to program. It's fast to use. Uh, it's very, very natural. Uh, you may want to offer some sheet protection. If, if a user does delete these, uh, you could um, you could run into a bug so you might want to what you might want to do is protect the sheet and if you're going to do protection right uh, you may want to add unprotect right to the code so you may want to protect your code review when you protect your sheet um, make sure you you do the protection and uh, keep this unselected if you allow if you allow edit objects they can still select and probably delete that so you don't you want to make sure that edit edit objects stays unselected okay and if you do decide to protect it, you may you may need, depending upon how your worksheet is structured, you may need to uh, unprotect it from the code here. So sometimes when we're displaying it, sometimes when we're displaying uh, certain, uh, in other words, here we go. If we're going to display this visible, sometimes we need to unprotect the sheet. So you may have to do unprotect here, right, and then enter a password here and then just make sure that you reprotect it here once once protect and then put the password here so this way it will unprotect and reprotect always so if you I do recommend always adding protection unless uh, you're using this for yourself but if you're giving it out or letting other people use it I do recommend adding those protections in I hope this has been helpful I would love to hear your suggestions and feedback on this one click increments as always i'm extremely excited and happy to bring you uh these workbooks each and every week and of course all i ask is that you do share the workbook uh, in your wall or in your favorite group i definitely appreciate it thanks so much